Welcome to Wary Tales. My name is Mojo, and I write short stories. This one is called The Broken Vow. In a land where magic and mortals intertwined, there lived a fairy named Gloriana, whose beauty was like the first light of dawn glistening upon a dewdrop. She guarded the enchanted forest, a realm of ancient trees and whispering winds, where the very air shimmered with unseen magic. One day, a mortal named Endrick ventured into this mystical domain. Tall and handsome, with a voice as soothing as a lullaby, Endrick was immediately drawn to Gloriana, his heart captivated by her ethereal grace. Endrick was attracted to her right away, but Gloriana was hesitant and distrustful of humans. Her past experiences had taught her to be wary, and she avoided his initial advances, flitting away like a butterfly escaping a net. Yet, Endrick was persistent. He would sit at the edge of the forest, singing melodies that danced through the trees and spoke of longing and tenderness. His songs were enchanting, weaving a spell of music that Gloriana could not resist. She would watch from the shadows, her heart gradually softening with each note. Slowly, Endrick's kindness and patience began to break down her defenses. He seemed gentle, picking wildflowers to present to her and telling stories of his land and people, tales filled with wonder and laughter. His smile exuded warmth, and his laughter was like the sweet song of birds at dawn, pulling her closer with each visit. Gloriana, drawn to his sincerity, found herself falling in love with him despite her initial fears. Their love blossomed in secret, like a rare flower blooming in the moonlight. They knew that love between fairies and humans was forbidden, a fragile bond that could shatter under the weight of their world's differences, but the pull between them was too strong to resist. They met under the ancient oak tree at the heart of the forest, a sacred place where they promised to be together forever, their love a delicate thread binding their souls in an unbreakable vow, yet destiny wove a darker thread into their tale. Darkness crept into their story, a sinister shadow that snaked its way through their happiness. Endrick, driven by an insatiable ambition and a burning desire to gain favor with a rival kingdom, betrayed Gloriana. His political aspirations, as sharp and cold as a dagger, sliced through the tender fabric of their love. He revealed the secrets of the enchanted forest to the enemy. The rival kingdom, with eyes gleaming like ravenous wolves, seized upon this betrayal. They stormed the forest, capturing the magical creatures that once danced freely among the trees and exploiting the land's bountiful resources. The vibrant flowers wilted, their colors draining away like blood from a wound. The air, once filled with the sweet scent of blossoms, grew heavy and stale. The harmonious songs of birds were replaced by the clanging of chains and the mournful cries of imprisoned fairies. Endrick's treachery was a poison, spreading chaos through Gloriana's world. The once serene and magical forest became a place of desolation and despair. The lush greenery turned to ash under the boots of the invaders, and the streams that once sparkled like liquid crystal were muddied and fouled. Gloriana's heart shattered, each fragment a painful reminder of the love she had lost and the trust that had been so cruelly betrayed. The rival kingdom grew stronger, their coffers filled with the spoils of their conquest, while Gloriana's realm fell into ruin. The betrayal was a festering wound, corrupting the very essence of the land. Endrick's ambition, as relentless and consuming as wildfire, had led him to forsake the love that had once been his salvation. And as the darkness deepened, the enchanted forest was left to wither, a forsaken shadow of its former glory. Heartbroken and vengeful, Gloriana's sorrow morphed into a seething wrath that churned within her like a stormy sea. 
Her once gentle and loving nature was consumed by a tempest of rage. She called upon her immense powers, the very essence of her being thrumming with dark energy. Her anguish was a catalyst, transforming her sorrow into a spell of unimaginable potency. With a wave of her hand, the curse took shape, a malevolent force spreading across the land. The once lush fields, where golden wheat swayed gently in the breeze, were buried under a suffocating blanket of perpetual night. Darkness enveloped the land, an endless twilight where the sun never rose, casting everything in a cold, eerie glow. The vibrant greens and radiant colors of the fields faded into shadow, the life-giving crops withering and dying under the relentless gloom. The rivers, which had once flowed with sparkling, life-giving water, dried up, their beds cracked and parched like the skin of a dying creature. The babbling brooks that had sung sweet songs to the forest now lay silent, their voices stolen by the curse. The fertile earth, once a patchwork quilt of greens and golds, turned to a barren wasteland. The crops that had fed the kingdom shriveled and turned to dust, the fields now stretching out like a desolate ocean of despair. The air grew stagnant, the sweet fragrance of flowers and ripe fruit replaced by the acrid stench of rot and spoilage. Animals that had once frolicked in the dappled sunlight now fled, driven away by the oppressive darkness and the scarcity of food and water. Gloriana's anger was a tangible force, radiating from her in waves that warped the very fabric of reality. The wind howled with her fury, a mournful wail that echoed through the barren landscape. The temperature plummeted, each breath becoming a labored gasp in the frigid air. Her sorrow and betrayal were etched into the land itself. Her curse plunged the kingdom into a darkness that was more than just the absence of light. It was a suffocating despair that snuffed out hope. Endrick's betrayal had not just broken her heart. It had unleashed a power that reshaped the land in the image of her suffering. The once flourishing kingdom was now a wasteland, a glaring reminder of the fairy's vengeance and the mortal's treachery. Gloriana's magic, once a force for beauty and creation, had become a harbinger of doom. Endrick found himself increasingly isolated, shunned by those who once admired him. Determined to make amends, he embarked on a perilous journey to seek Gloriana's forgiveness. He knew the path would be treacherous, but the thought of her suffering and the suffering of his people spurred him on. The devastated forest stretched out before him, an endless expanse of desolation. The ground, once lush with life, was now a hardened crust of dust and dirt. Each step was a trial, the icy wind biting at his flesh, cutting through his clothes like a thousand tiny knives. He battled the elements, the bitter cold seeping into his bones, sapping his strength and will. The air was saturated with the acrid scent of decay, a constant reminder of the blight he had brought upon the land. A few wild beasts, twisted and maddened by the curse, roamed the darkness. Their eyes glowed with a malevolent hunger, their growls echoing through the night like the rumble of distant thunder. Endrick fought them off, his sword flashing in the dim light, each encounter leaving him more exhausted and wounded. His resolve, however, remained unbroken. The thought of Gloriana guided him through the darkness. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, Endrick reached the heart of the enchanted forest. The ancient oak tree, where they had once pledged their love, loomed before him. Its branches, now bare and twisted, reached out like skeletal fingers against the perpetual night. The air was laced with a sense of sorrow and despair, the very essence of the forest weeping for what had been lost. There, beneath the ancient oak, he found Gloriana. Her beauty, undiminished by the passage of time, 
shone like a radiant star in a moonless night. Yet her eyes, once filled with warmth and love, now burned with sorrow and anger. They pierced through him, as cold and unforgiving as the winds he had battled to reach her. Her presence was like a haunting melody, both beautiful and tragic, a reminder of the love they had lost. Gloriana, he whispered, his voice trembling with emotion. I am so sorry for what I've done. She stood silent, her gaze unwavering. I betrayed you, he continued, his voice breaking. I let my ambition blind me, and now our world suffers because of me. Please, forgive me. Gloriana's eyes narrowed, her sorrow mingling with a deep, simmering anger. Her voice, when she finally spoke, was as cold and unyielding as the darkness that had claimed her forest. She told him that he was not entitled to forgiveness, that his remorse meant nothing to her. The darkness would continue, she declared, and his world would wither away, his people starving slowly over time as the endless night engulfed the land. Her words were as relentless as the curse itself, a dark prophecy that would come to pass. The darkness will consume your kingdom, she said, her voice a whisper that echoed like a death knell. Only when the last of the humans are gone will I lift the curse. Your people will fade away, their lives extinguished one by one, like candles snuffed out in the night. And as they suffer, I will rebuild the enchanted forest. Even if it takes hundreds of years, I will restore it to its former glory. The knowledge of your endless suffering will spur me on. Endrick felt the weight of her words, each one a heavy stone upon his heart. The realization of his irrevocable mistake settled over him like a relentless tide, drowning him in sorrow. He could see no hint of mercy in her eyes, only the hard, cold resolve of someone who had been deeply wronged. With those final words, she turned away from him, her silhouette disappearing into the shadows of the cursed forest. Endrick, now alone, felt a profound emptiness within him. He wandered through the darkened landscape, each step a futile attempt to escape the curse that clung to him like a relentless shadow. He traveled far and wide, seeking a place where he could find solace and redemption. But the curse followed him, a dark cloud that blighted every land he touched. The night was endless. His presence brought only ruin, a harbinger of despair. The people he encountered recoiled from him, their fear and anger palpable. He saw the suffering etched on their faces, a mirror of his own torment. The weight of his betrayal bore down on him, an ever-present reminder of the love he had forsaken for political gain. As the years passed, the endless night began to take its toll. Endrick's once strong and proud frame grew gaunt and fragile. The memories of his betrayal haunted him, relentless specters that whispered of his grave mistake. Finally, driven to the brink of madness by his unending torment, Endrick succumbed. He withered away, a husk of the man he once had been. His betrayal, which had once gained him political favor, had ultimately ended his life. As he took his last breath, he realized that his name would be remembered only as a cautionary tale of ambition and betrayal, a harsh lesson whispered on the winds of time. He had paid the ultimate price for forsaking love and trust, and in the heart of the enchanted forest, Gloriana began to restore what had been lost. The knowledge of Endrick's endless suffering was a dark satisfaction, a constant reminder of the power of a broken vow. The end. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I wanted to do something, you know, fantasy, um, something a little bit different, something with a fairy and... I just, I don't know, I just had this idea. Um, at first, I was going to end it with him 
rebuilding the forest, like actually showing um, his remorse by planting flowers and, you know, moving logs out of there and rebuilding the enchanted forest. But then I was thinking there are degrees of things you can do that are forgivable. And then you cross a line into territory where it's not forgivable, you know? And I, I kind of weighed that for a while. I'm like, this is, you know, he wiped out the entire forest and all of our people and the fairies are in prison, um, the ones that are still alive. I'm like, yeah, no, I don't care how many flowers he plants. This guy just isn't forgivable and I just don't think he should be forgiven. I just don't. So I went ahead and changed the ending and um, took away his chance for redemption. Um, so I know it's a little bit dark, but I hope you like it. Everybody has been so great. I was going to write a story to celebrate um, 200 subscribers, but I'm at like 274 right now. So I'm closer to 300. So um, I, I have some ideas. I don't know if I was going to write sort of a um, a fairy's tale, which is just sort of like a thinly veiled um, story of my life. And then other people said, hey, maybe you should do just like a question and answer thing or an about me. So if you have any questions or if you want me to do an about me and there's anything you'd like to know about me, please put it in the comments. I'm, I'm perfectly happy to um, answer any questions about myself that you might have. Um, I've got a lot coming. So I have a story that I just finished for next week. And I am writing chapter 15 of my podcast right now out of 20. Um, this is a long weekend. I actually get to leave work early today and then we're off on Monday. So I'm going to be doing a lot of recording this weekend. I don't know if you can hear that bird. <laughs> I just don't know. There is a bird in my balcony um, and he's just chirping away, which is great. It's um, almost sunrise. So um, I just don't know if you can hear it or not. I did get this new microphone and it has noise suppression on it, which seems to be really great because people can't hear the beeping from the hotel and stuff. And this is actually a very calm, very quiet morning. My cat ate her food and then went back to bed. She's not running around. Um, it is just very, very still. The only thing is that bird on my balcony. Um, so yeah, I just, I want to say how grateful I am for all the support. All of the comments I have gotten have just been so amazing and so supportive. And when you're um, writing or creating, it's very risky you put yourself out there and you're in this position of vulnerability because when people judge your work, it feels like they're judging you. And that can be very nerve wracking and very scary. And I really wasn't sure. I really wasn't sure if anybody would like it. And I kept stalling. Like I got 50 subscribers and I just kind of stalled there. And then I got up to like 70 and I kind of stalled there. And then I got around 115. And I swear to you, one day it would be 115, the next day it would be 116, and then 115 and 116. And it just stayed there. And then I put out The Alchemist and the Twins and it just exploded. And people just embraced that story so much. And I am so grateful. People are going back and reading i um, not reading, listening to um, some of the older stories that I wrote when I was still kind of experimenting and trying to find my voice and seeing what audiences liked and what they would tolerate. I was trying a bunch of different things and people are going back and even um, watching my shorts and I have a ton of them. I, I've, I've made like 50 um, shorts plus I did some murder mysteries that were in seven parts or 10 parts or 31 parts. Um, so I'm just, I'm just so blown away that people are that interested and that supportive and it is so nice and it means so much to me. And, um, I did want to give a little cancer update because I have had my last cancer treatment and I get a scan in six weeks 
and we will know then. So I get the scan in six weeks and then the week after that I see my oncologist and we go over the results and discuss that final surgery. I don't know if I'm having one final surgery or if I'm having two, but I'll find out then. And then after that, I think I'm going to be cancer free. He mentioned putting me on another cancer medication that's a pill, not an infusion. Um, So I don't know if that's instead of surgery or after surgery. I'm not really sure, Um, but I'll find out in six weeks. And everybody's just been so supportive and so wonderful. So um, keep me in your thoughts. Um, We're at the tail end of this. I might actually, I might actually beat stage four colon cancer, which just blows my mind because I there was a time when I wasn't sure that that was going to happen. So thank you everybody for watching. Um, please like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Um, I have something new next week. Um, something that it was just an idea that came to me when I was falling asleep and I really love the idea and I'm just going to run with it. And then after that, I think I'm going to do like an about me or like a Mojo's tale kind of thing. Um, if you have any questions, please, please, please put them below. Um, and then after that, I will give you some little sneak peeks of my podcast. If um, maybe some behind the scenes kind of stuff, I can show you some of the images I've been playing around with. Um, I have an artist that I have working on um, some of the images for me. And so hopefully you like it. I mean, that's a story that I've wanted to write for 16 or 17 years. So I'm so excited to be finishing it up. I mean, I can't even believe I'm at the tail end of it now. I've got it almost three quarters of the way done, which just, it's amazing. It's amazing. So again, thank you. I hope everybody has a wonderful weekend and thank you again for the support. It means, gosh, it means so much more to me than you could ever possibly know. It's, it's amazing. And it, it feels great to have that support and to have people embracing my stories the way they are. And yeah, it really means a lot to me and I appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you very much.